getting ready to work on my broom rider's mitts, which I talked about in the other video, and so I will link that video and you can see. Quick intro, hello, because of course I forgot as always. Uh, welcome to Wild Cottage, friends. This is Susan, and I live here in County Clare in the hills in the west of Ireland. I uh, live here with my partner, uh, my bonus son Merlin, and our adopted dogs, Shep, who's a retired sheepdog, and Mimi, who is uh, unknown, but definitely part lab. And we grow most of our own vegetables here. We do natural dyeing. We have what we call a small holding for nature. Um, yeah, we're very lucky. We live in a very beautiful rural place. And this is my crafting podcast. Well, actually, this is my, this is a little vlog about my works in progress because I hadn't been well. I'm feeling much better today, really much better. So that's great. I know, you know, I've got so many lovely wishes from you all in my last vlog. And um, I go through and read. I know there's more that I haven't even got to. So I'll go through and read those while this is uploading. I really appreciate it. You, you know, it really, yeah, it's very touching. It just gives a little boost when you're not feeling well. But so this is going to be a little vlog about just a few of the things I'm working on. I'm going to give you a little glimpse of the many things I've been working on and that I want to talk about coming vlogs over the coming days and all. Like, and I'm going to show you, though, I'm out here because this is Tom's birthday present. I finished the first of his neck and neck and neck and oh, I still haven't figured out set socks by Amelia Brovel of um, Knitting with Amelia in Style podcast. And this is a color work pattern based on a, a Swedish legend. And I've knitted out of some of my minis and leftovers from Halloween -y type yarns. So this is one. This is another from Finely Fibers. And then this is another again. I think this one is from Dystopic Fibers. But, and then the blue is just a sock yarn from Hobie. And so you can see here the color work that I did on it. There's also more color work that you can put on it that is related to the story. But because this is just for Tom, this is specific to him, this part. So I just did that part. Sorry, I'm a bit uncomfortable in the chair. So yeah, um, really enjoyed it. I made some modifications because with his sensory sensitivities, he finds it very hard when the pearl side it's hard to see in the slide, isn't it? The pearl side is uh, on the bottom of his foot. So after I did the heel, I turned the sock inside out and knitted it, you know, reverse. And then for the toe, I turned it back again. I don't know if that will bother him or not. Or yeah, I was just, but I was just thinking, you know, that the toe will be better right side out. So it's got like this little lip. That's just because, and you only see that when it's not on the foot. But he's tried this on. I was a little worried about it fitting around his ankles because the joints have been really sort of deformed by the um, type of arthritis he has, and they're really big. But it fit, so it was it went over. So I was really happy about that. So I will do the second sock a little bit later. But I will um, just sit here for the moment. It's quite sunny. And there's a cool breeze, so yeah, I'm gonna work on my broom rider's mitt. Up every so often and just walking around the garden, then coming back for a wee rest. And this time I went out. I have so so many dahlias, and um, they're one of my favorite flowers because the variety they come in. And so I just picked a few, and I put them near the bed. Now they aren't scented, but this is one of my favorite ones. I just love this pink and white. And then this here. Oh, I just, oh, what am I saying? And what, the thing that is so magical about a lot of flowers, when you get them out and you get them in really bright sun, if your eyes are okay, you might need to put on, if you're older, like now that I'm older, your glasses for close, seeing close. But often you can see the iridescence. It's like they have little sparklies in the sun and the petals. And it's just so magical. 
I noticed that the first time I ever really saw very many dahlias. We went to a lovely, just a private little house near where I used to live in County Kilkenny. And this man grew all so many different kinds of dahlias and he was picking them and giving them to me. And I fell in love from that moment and I saw the sparkles in them. And yeah, so that's making me feel really happy here at my bedside. And I'm starting a swatch for my pumpkin jumper here i've just started it um it's not quite that orange uh, but anyway there here we have it here and it's what i've done is i've got you know the the colorway from the fiber boys well that's not their name what <laughs> fiber fiber hustle and then the hobie yarn and i'm holding it I'm, i went ahead and held it with the friends even though it's not quite as soft Oh, let me fix this color because if color. this is a different tea it's more it's a it's a it's definitely orange pumpkiny but it's more of a melon type of orange it's hard to see now in the bedroom but yeah so it's coming along pretty well the uh stitch gauge is 10 stitches uh per four inches or 20 and 20 stitches row gauge and i'm starting on an eight millimeter needle because that's what I did my other jumper in. So um, early days, I haven't ma measured yet. And the big needles anyway, I find that for the sleeve and the body, even though the sleeves are on a smaller circumference, with the big needles anyway, my gauge doesn't really change. So I think I can pretty much trust the gauge, not even though it's this small little guy. So that's, that's that. And my buddy is sleeping beside me. I got out my lovely autumnal type project bag from Amelia of Amelian style stuffed all my um orange pumpkin things in there yeah so that's that's all that's happening here and here it is here is the array or just actually some of the array of the things I've been making and things I have laid out for future knitting along with the MCAL. Steven. These are my main yarns and I have picked some out for a mohair dare. These are from Stash. I try to shop from my Stash, although I have to say I was mightily tempted when Dye Candy, who is a dyer up in Northern Ireland, and I buy a lot of things from her, did send to her newsletter to subscribers that she was she would die up oops sorry um four skeins you know you'd contact her in what kind of colors you wanted i think she was charging 68 pounds or something for the special dyed stuff and she would said she would have a turnaround within a week so she may still be doing that i was so tempted but i just yeah i just can't be doing that right now and i plus i wanted to use these stash yarns which are quite special so the very lightest one are actually one they're left over from last year's do um last year's geo gradient last year's mcal because i didn't use all of them i'd gotten a second skin because i was afraid i'd run out and these are from these are from olan and the colorway is north star they're two different dye lots because i bought them at different times so one is a little bit lighter than the other and I don't think we'll see how much I need. I don't know if I'll need any to break into the second ball or not, because this is not quite 100 grams. I think it's like 68 grams. So, but I don't think it'll make a big difference. And then I have three yarns from the U.S. Um, when I was over there two years ago, there I picked these up during the James River yarn crawl. And this is from a Richmond-based dyer, which is really special to me because I used to live in Richmond. I went to VCU, I went to university there right before um, I moved over to Ireland. And so these are some of their uh, yarns and they're named for places in Richmond. So like, for example, this one is Pony Pasture. And, um, these are all uh, 75, 25, four plies, fingering weight. So superwash merino and nylon. So this is pony pasture, the sort of lighter one. Then we jump over into the Jefferson. 
And then we jump over to, where do we go next? The canal walk. So I'm, I think this is going to be really lovely and autumnal because my favorite kind of colors are anything really bright and vibrant and then also autumnal type colors. So, and these are lovely and they feel soft and they just work out perfectly because in my stash, I don't actually have a lot of solids or semi-solids. So the fact that I have these in my stash, because I bought them together, I was, you know, wanted to do something with them together. But that is just sort of like a meant to be sort of situation. Now for Mohair Dare, I have a few options. I have some, now this is actually sparkly that I got at a secondhand shop when I was in the States. Wow, let me lighten this up a little. Yeah, there you go. So you can see that better. It has a gold sparkle in it. I could go with that. Then I have this here that is just a Drops Kid Silk. I'll just put them along there. I have a goldeny kind of Drops that I think I'm actually using this in my Vroom Vroom shawl as well. Or this is the one I probably will go for because uh, in Virginia and the States two years ago, I also bought from Urban Girl Yarns this beautiful mohair. I mean, look at this. We have 460 yards and the 100 grams of the lace weight, 7030 Kid Mel Mohair and Mulberry Silk. Oh, no, sorry. Bangkok is obviously the, the base name and the color is Sylvan. So that is going to be super lovely. I'm sure I'm just going to go with that. But then you never know. But I think, I mean, how can I not? These RVA yarns and, of course, some Irish yarns because Olan is Irish. I always have an Irish yarn and everything because I have so many. So, yeah, I think this is a perfect combo. I'm really quite excited about that. And I will be um, doing blogs about the MCAL. Are you joining? Have you picked your yarns? What kind of color story are you going for? Let me know in the comments. I'm really interested. Okay, friends, now let me get back to the... Uh, bits and bobs, other bits and bobs in the video last M cow. I actually am taking a part in the Telly Bean Knits M cow for the, I think it's called the Haunted House Cow. And I've been doing some other crafts too. Spinning. So, so my knitting, my crochet, my spinning. So I'll give you a little look. This is cross stitch. Now this is like super duper easy cross stitch because it is printed and this is what I tend to work on when I uh, you know have like gotten two hours of sleep in the night and I can't get back to sleep so I go and I just work on these lovely little autumnal gnomes and you can see I've got this gnomes sunflower done and some of the shading on the leaves I've actually ordered some fuzzy white thread embroidery floss for their beard so I'm kind of excited about that and I ordered I could only find that on Etsy in the shop in the states that doesn't even send over here so I had it sent to my dad in the U.S. and I'll get him to send that over so this has been just a really good project for the wee hours of the night when the brain doesn't really function that well but it's just lovely and soothing and I I'm not a counted cross stitch person. I never will be. I actually bought a counted cross stitch little um, project by accident because I thought it was printed. And I'm going to do that as a giveaway in probably the next video if anyone is interested in that. So that's one thing. And of course, I've been just to show you quickly, I've been coloring and I got this. This was like one or two euros in the shop called The Range which is sort of the closest thing that we have to like a a big box store that has craft section uh, here in Ireland. I mean, at least in my area of Ireland here in the West, it's the only thing I know of. So, cause it has several aisles of craft things. It has everything in there, but it has several aisles of craft things. And I just got this little coloring book for, um, that's what I'm working on at the minute, the squirrel, the red squirrel, for 50 or 2 euros. So if you're in the UK, that's a UK chain, so you have it. Or if you're in Ireland, 
Uh, that's where I got this and that's where I got these little gnomes. So yeah, so I've been working on just messing around with those things when I feel like it. Well, I'll talk about the book again in a minute. And then just to show you another craft that I mess around with is paper crafting, making a junk journal. And I've just started this one. This was um, packaging. So it was uh, brown paper or brown cardboard packaging that I've just glued some things to. I went through the different papers that I have and have chosen different papers. I have just some notebook paper that I'm actually going to coffee stain and put in there. And then I'll punch them all with my, you know, my book binder. So I'll bind that all in there and make just a little autumnal notebook. And I've got different stickers and things and I'll, you know, I'll embellish it and write things in. Of course, I have a gnome because I'm silly for gnomes and he's got his pumpkin coffee. Yeah. So that is just some of my other crafts that I've been doing that aren't fiber craft. So I'm reading that. The Lost Flock by Jane Cooper. I'm not the only one who loves dahlias. This bumblebee who is in slow motion, actually. And the snail do as well. That's all for my little catch up for now. Stay tuned for the vlog number three in the next coming days. Hope you're well, friends. Happy Autumn Equinox, because that's today here in the Northern Hemisphere. I'm editing this on the 23rd of September. And it's rainy and very autumnal. <laughs>